everyone and welcome to Friday. It is one of my favorite days of the week because it leads into the weekend, which is always fun. But nonetheless, uh, always full of extremely difficult news. No matter which way you turn, there's a lot of things happening. I was on a, um, a Zoom call with some leaders from across the country this morning. And one of them just had to be honest and say, I think that Canada is in for some very dark days. And we all kind of shook our head. Like the feeling that we have is, first of all, we don't know how to get Trudeau out. Um, Aaron O'Toole has proved to be, I mean, little more than also one of the Build Back Better buddies. We just, you know, what is going on? Like we don't have opposition in this country. People are tweeting about like, who is the opposition in Canada? It appears the opposition is now the Liberty Coalition, you know, comprised of Derek Sloan, Maxime Bernier, um, uh, Randy Hillier, Michael Teason, you know, these people that are standing against the tyranny and the medical tyranny. You can't trust anybody these days. It, it seems like everyone's a liar. And when, they, when they're when they even found out, they don't really admit that, well, you know, maybe I misstated or a really good way would be to say, you know, that was the data that we had then. But I've since, you know, I've, I've come to understand and, you know, I'd like to retract a little bit. Of, no, no, they're like, no, I, I didn't say that and I don't mean that. And, you know, talking about Fauci. But um, we're going to talk about him a little bit later in the show. And I am so excited to say that we have got Martin Armstrong with us today of Armstrong Economics. And boy, do I have some questions for him. Uh, he talks about a lot of stuff and a lot of it... Um, some of it we just can't discuss here. So we're going to go again today to DLive, DLive.tv backslash Laura-Lynn. Is that correct? Did I get it right? Because you weren't as fast as me in saying that. So DLive.tv backslash Laura-Lynn. If you want to go and follow us right now there, uh, can you also go to Odyssey? Yep, Odyssey. Um, and if you can put that up, there's two different places to go. Um, I really like Odyssey. Odyssey has a very nice feel. It's a soft, gentle look. D Live, it's actually sort of the gamers, and it scares me. Like it's got a yellow guy. I'd say like a yellow head. Uh, you know, I don't know. I I don't know what the you know. It's oh, we're on Odyssey, and it's there. So would you put that up for everyone? Oh yeah, Odyssey.com, and then you find at Laura Lynn TT. You'll be able to follow us for the full show, and in fact, you can you know, subscribe and you can watch us live every single day. Sometimes we'll go to Facebook and YouTube and sometimes we won't be able to. So that's one way to do it. Um, I can't believe it, but I guess Maxime Bernier has been arrested in St. Pierre, Manitoba. And I think that he was given a letter stating that he's not allowed to come there and to speak against the protests and to stand up against the tyranny, he's not allowed. I don't know about you, but I thought that the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, like, does our Constitution not allow all Canadians? I've read it. All Canadians are allowed to work and to move about freely anywhere in the country that they would like. If you're a Canadian citizen, man, you, you we're in the best country in the world, right? Aren't we? Well, it's a little bit more like North Korea every single day, but... We still love our Canada, don't we? And last I heard, you're allowed to go places. So I got a call today about my two tickets that I got in Manitoba. Ironically, the guy calls me, wants to know if I'd like to pay a reduced fine now, which is nice. That's interesting, isn't it? They give you a ticket for like 20 some hundred dollars and then they say, would you like to do the reduced fine? I bet Mr. Armstrong would say, that sounds like a good deal. But I bet he'd also agree with me though that if you're getting a ticket for simply doing something that is allowed by our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, that maybe you should fight it. I bet he'd agree with me on that. We'll ask him. Um, so I told the guy, I'm going to fight it. And uh, he said that they would set a court date for me and I would be able to fight that ticket. And then I went on to tell him why. I said, I think it's really ridiculous that I'm not allowed to speak in public where there's zero proof of transmission out in the open. I'm not allowed to speak out in the open in Canada. And all of the evidence and the facts are on my side about this. And he says, well, you don't have to convince me, ma'am. You just got to show up at court. So I'll be either on Zoom or heading over to Manitoba. And I think that Maxime Bernier and others that day who also got tickets at the same time as me will be there. 
it's going to be busy. It's going to be busy. We're probably going to do another rally. We don't know. But, you know, what's wrong with you? Like, seriously, in Manitoba, same as Saskatchewan, right? You're going to arrest that, that young high schooler, Cody, who was on the show yesterday. Because why? His lung collapsed. One side of his lungs collapsed when he wore a mask. He has medical proof of this. And you are trying to force him to wear a mask in school. And so he can't finish his last year. Oh, what's wrong with you? And then some of you teachers, you're actually making kids do push-ups because their mask fell below their nose. Like, you know, oh, oh, so nasty. So we have some stuff uh, just to look at briefly here. But Global News, Winnipeg businesses, uh, speaking of Manitoba, uh, need Manitoba's financial support now. So here's what's happening. we got a big problem, everybody because they are saying that they're not going to be able to survive another lockdown. They are not going to be able to go through this again. In fact, they're saying that they used up some of their, you know, dollars that they had, you know, put away under the first lockdown. And because COVID cases are going up, it's actually going to bankrupt a whole bunch of people as it has done in British Columbia. Uh, it, is the Canadian government completely so removed from the people that you do not see the, the burden that you are uh, putting on folks? I, I don't get it. A lot of confusion. Some businesses we've spoken to are closing out of precaution, not wanting to be fined, he said. Others are open based on what they've been advised. The province announced the new restrictions Friday, but offered no additional financial support for businesses. And it's unclear how many businesses are forced to close under the new restrictions. Um, a number of them have said to us, we are unlikely to come out of this. That's what they're saying in Manitoba. We are unlikely to come out of this. We are probably keeping our do doors closed for good. And I expect we will see more coming forward. These are the dark days that my friends were talking about this morning. Dark days in Canada, economically, uh, spiritually, keeping our churches locked up. And when you do open them, you, you let 50 people in, 50 people. I actually attend a church of 5,000 people, 5,000 village church. How are you supposed to have do church with, with 50 people? How many services is that? And no singing. God forbid you sing with a mask on. Oh my word. Do masks work? Or not. I don't know. All right. And now uh, Manitoba also, listen to this. I, I don't know why I'm picking on Manitoba today. It's the bad Manitoba day. But fully vaccinated Manitobans to get secure immunization cards. So this is a scary trend. Hey, if you got your fully vaccinated card, what do you get to do? Well, hmm. You, uh, you get to travel without quarantining anywhere. Well, big deal. No one's quarantining, um, really. Uh, they'll get back to doing the things they love. And one of the biggest uh, incentives to getting vaccinated is, yeah, you, that you just get to have your freedoms, you know, getting out into the community. Well, I don't know. I have been out in the community and this is ridiculous. So you have to take a vaccine in order to do this. What about all the people that have already had COVID-19? thousands and thousands thousands they have natural immunity they've done some testing and people that had mild covid um last year seem to still have their immunities and they're strong so they don't tend to get covid19 again once you've had it that's it you're good you're good you've survived the global pandemic wow right should be something to celebrate but no uh Fauci refuses to actually comment on this, even though he knows if you have immunity, you shouldn't be getting the vaccine, but he refuses to actually say this out loud, although I believe that they have him uh, saying it in private. All right. Um, I think that that's all we'll do right now because I'm excited to get to Mr. Armstrong and we're going to do that over on the other uh, side. I also have a Tucker Carlson clip to play you that I don't think would be allowed to be played on Facebook or YouTube. Times are so serious. 
And so I don't want to disrespect that these platforms that do not wish to have good information. I'm not going to be disrespectful to you. I'm simply going to ask everyone to now please uh, join me on D Live. I will say that I thank you to everyone who supports this program. The only way that we're able to do this is that, uh, whoops, the only way that we're able to do this is that we have you here to help us. We don't get any of uh, Trudeau's money. We don't get people just, you know, saying, saying, hey, here's $100,000 to operate everything. And um, one thing I'd like to also tell you before we go is just to remind you of the Freedom Worship Rally that is coming up this Sunday. You don't want to miss it. It's down at the Jackpool Plaza. And this is where we get to have church outside. We can't have church indoors except for 50 people and no singing. Well, when we go outside down here, we're allowed to protest. Isn't that one of the beautiful things of British Columbia. Now in certain places in Canada, do you realize they have actually shut down protesting, not allowed to protest anymore. And so that is really, um, you know, bizarre world to me. It really, really, really is. But in any case, um, we're gonna, we're gonna hold church and we're gonna hold it loud and we're gonna sing and we're allowed to because we're protesting tyranny and crazyville. So before I go, I want to read to you something that I found. We're going to talk about money today. Do you want to know what you should invest in? Do you want to know if Canada's in trouble financially? Martin Armstrong is going to be asked those important questions. We're going to ask him what he thinks that we should do. Say you have um, a mortgage that's fairly high. This is a question I have for him. He can begin preparing because he's watching in the background. But you know, if you have a, let's say you have a, a mortgage of um, 500,000 to 700,000 and if you are coming up to your renewal, your interest rate might go up. Should you sell now? Should you stay with that house? Should you, you know, like where is everything going? You know, should we move to Florida where everybody's running around free as a bird? Well, we're not, I don't know. Proverbs 13, 11, can I read you something about money? Do you know that money is the topic that the Bible talks about the very, very most? And I think that this is, uh, this is gonna be good for us today to read from uh, this good book, it talks about talks about money and of course um, Solomon wrote Proverbs he was the wisest man that ever lived other than that he took on seven or eight hundred wives <laughs> no man thinks that smart okay all right so dishonest money dwindles away but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow that's pretty good huh I think that there's a lot to be said for what's going on with money in the world the love of money is the root of all evil. And when you love money more than you love character, when you love money more than you love integrity, you get yourself in trouble. But when you put money in its correct position, I think that's when, you know, you it, it can be put to good use. But we do have a problem right now. And that problem is that there are very, very wealthy beings on our planet and they do not have our best interests at heart and we're going to talk about them on D Live or on Odyssey. And when I read about how what the Bible says is that um, it is a fool who puts their love for the gain of things and also of power. It's a fool who puts those things in first place. I don't want to be that fool. When it comes to money, I want my money in order. I want to understand the times. And we perish for lack of knowledge. The kind of knowledge that we're going to talk about right now on D Live and Odyssey is the kind that we need to know about for our money. So please join us over there. And um, I appreciate all that you do. I love you guys. I hope that you can just switch over right now. And we're going to play a little, uh, a one minute clip from the uh, worship rally that we did last time. So take a look at this while y'all switch over to the other side, okay? See you there, thank you. But can we pause before we take communion and repent and understand what the blood really did for us? The spirit of death is moving through a town and the Lord says this is how you handle death this is how you handle destruction 
I want you to put the blood of Jesus on the doorpost. Put the blood of Jesus on your mind. I grew up old school. So all the hymns love them. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. Okay, well, I hope that you're all over on uh, on D, um, D Live and Odyssey. Okay, it's going to be fun. This is new us doing it this way, so bear with me. Um, right before we go to Mr. Armstrong, the latest VAERS data shows uh, 5,165 deaths reported following COVID vaccines. That is only the North American. The EU is much higher. And uh, I heard a, a very disturbing story this morning about a 29-year-old who has had a very bad reaction after vaccine. The thing about the doctors is they're, they're always saying, well, you know, we don't know that it has to do with the vaccine. And of course, they're all saying that. I mean, they're, the, the College of Physicians has told all doctors in Canada they are not to speak against the lockdowns, the masks, the vaccinations. They're not to speak against it. So when there's a bad reaction, people are even hesitant to put it on the VAERS reporting system. So therefore they say it's either one to 10% that ever gets reported anywhere. So we already have 5,165 deaths this year post-vaccination. So the um, an amazing thing happened last night and I, I'm, I'd like to um, just run this brief clip of Tucker Carlson so you all know it. I don't think that I can put this on the other sites. I don't think I can put this on Facebook and YouTube without getting banned again okay so i have been watching for who is going to deal with this information first who is going to talk about this first because even over at fox they're very hesitant uh hannity i love hannity but he's got his shot and he's not talking about the adverse reactions and he you know he's kind of he hasn't delved into it but tucker carlson he has so take a look at, at this. It's just a couple of minutes of riveting information. Israeli health officials released a report showing that vaccinated young people, particularly young men, were developing a potentially fatal complication, a heart inflammation called myocarditis, and they were developing it at extremely high rates. Researchers determined that the incidence of myocarditis in vaccinated young men was fully 25 times the usual rate. Some of them died. In Canada, at least one public health official observed the same thing. Dr. Peter Liu is the chief scientific officer at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. He's an expert in myocarditis. Liu began to notice heart inflammation in patients who'd received the vaccine. It is more than coincidental, he said. In Germany, authorities concluded the same thing. The German government just announced that healthy young people should avoid the vaccine. It's too dangerous. This is a serious development for us in the United States. If statistical trends observed in Israel hold here, as many as 150,000 young Americans will develop a potentially fatal heart disorder because of the COVID vaccines. That's not alarmism. It's not some kind of anti-vaxxer conspiracy theory. It's real. Just this afternoon, the CDC confirmed what appear to be dangerous side effects. The country's two biggest vaccine monitoring systems, the Biden administration's vaccine adverse reporting system, known as VAERS, and the CDC's vaccine safety data link. Both show strikingly high rates of myocarditis in young people who have been vaccinated. We clearly have an imbalance there, a CDC official announced today. Imbalance is one way to put it. Potential emergency is another way. Given these numbers, it is possible that healthy young people in this country will be much more likely to be harmed by the vaccine than by COVID itself. That would be a disaster. In fact, it would be the definition of a preventable disaster. How are our institutions responding to these new numbers? Well, mostly by ignoring them completely. In fact, in just the last week, many American colleges and universities have announced they will require proof of vaccination, an official vaccination card, before they allow students to return to campus. At some schools, the mandate applies only to students, 
for reasons no one has explained or could possibly defend, it does not apply to faculty and staff. They are not required to be vaccinated. As for the huge number of young people who have already recovered from COVID and therefore likely have robust immunity, at least as robust as they could get from any vaccine, they will be required to get the shot too. These are big numbers. There are close to 20 million college students in this country. And in the end, most will have no choice but to take a drug that other governments have concluded is dangerous for them to take. Yesterday, Virginia State University system announced that vaccine exemptions will be nearly impossible for students to get. An exemption, quote, will not be granted based on a philosophical, moral, or conscientious objection. In other words, your conscience is irrelevant. Personal autonomy means nothing. It is no longer your body. It is no longer your choice. When it comes to this vaccine, there is no escape. You wonder watching this how it could happen in a free country. It's hard to believe it is happening. As a medical decision, it is reckless. What are the long-term effects of forcing these drugs on millions of young people, many of whom don't need it? Well, we don't know the answer. We don't know what the long-term effects are. Anyone who claims he does know is lying. At this point, there's literally no way to tell. Just today, the FDA's advisory panel met to discuss the rise in cardiac emergencies in healthy young people who have received the vaccine. So far, the rate of myocarditis is more than twice what authorities anticipated. As one Tufts medical school professor who sits on the panel put it, quote, before we start vaccinating millions of adolescents and children, it is so important to find out what the consequences are. Well, you'd think it would be important to find out. But Joe Biden doesn't want to wait. Biden promised universal vaccination, whether we need it or not, and he plans to get it done. Here he is last week telling you to shut up and take the shot. You know, some people have questions about how quickly the vaccines were developed. They say it's, they've been developed so quickly they can't be that good. The bottom line is this, I promise you, they are safe. They are safe. And even more importantly, they're extremely effective. I promise you, they are safe. They are safe. If the numbers out of Israel turn out to be real and applicable to this country, our population, the clip you just saw will live, live forever as one of the most destructive things a sitting president has ever said from a podium. Okay, so I just wanted you to see that, and I want you to know that you need to share this broadcast and you need to tell people about what's happening because they will not hear this on mainstream media and Fox being mainstream but very right-leaning and often you know careful as well about what they say um, although although far less careful than CNN is um, the CTV CBC global uh, CNN all of these places will not be reporting the kind of data that is now coming out and they don't want to cause vaccine hesitancy and so it's really important to protect your loved ones let them know that it, it before they get the vaccine at least be informed about some of the the things that are happening and so i would like very very much to switch gears now and to talk about our money and money talks when everything else walks okay i don't know if that's true but anyways uh, Armstrong Economics offers unique perspectives intended to educate the general public and organizations on the underlying trends within the global economic and political environment. Our mission is to research historical cyclical patterns and market behavior in timing, price, and crisis to better understand and identify potential future trends using an extensive monetary database. Um, and advanced proprietary models. You can find armstrongeconomics.com online and Martin uh, Armstrong is the guy who is sort of um, the mastermind behind, well, his machines and his graphs and everything going on there. So I just welcome you to the show. Thanks for being here again. Oh, thank you for inviting me. As you know, I don't really give interviews that often to people, but I, you are an exception. I know, and I really appreciate that. I, you have no idea how honored I am. And the last time that we had you on, I mean, people were like, what? You got, you got uh, Mr. Armstrong? And I said, yeah, I, I don't know how, but I just, I think that we found favor with you somehow, and I don't even care what it is. I'm just so grateful. Um, so you, you recently uh, put up something and you said, you know, can we trust Dr. Pepper or Dr. Fauci more? So I'm wondering uh, what, what that was about and, and, What's your take on all of that? Well, I, I think with all the emails that have come out, um, if you just 
flat out right unbiased about it. Uh, even now, look at the polls. Only 17% of Americans even believe Fauci. 54% think it was it came from a, a leak at the lab. Um, I mean, from the very beginning, uh, I have stated, number one, that I knew that this was kind of orchestrated. Uh, there were calls coming out of the, the WEF in, in January, February of 2020 to people that I know that said, uh, be careful, get out of the markets, a virus is coming. Bill Gates started selling stock in December 2019. All right. Uh, Schwab sold everything that he had and the WEF uh, in, in February. I mean, nobody investigates this stuff. Uh, if you just look at what it is, I mean, our, our computer picked this up as a, as a manipulation. Why? Because this, the markets fell faster than at, in the shortest amount of time than any point in history. And I mean, it, it even beat the Great Depression. All right. So it was orchestrated. And I believe what they were trying to do was exactly the same thing of lockdowns. I mean, there is information out there that they were also preparing lockdowns for climate. Uh, the Guardian put out an article saying uh, maybe we need lockdowns for climate every two years. I mean, this has all been orchestrated. And, and the end really is this great reset, um, climate change, and all these things that are extremely exaggerated. I mean, we have one of the largest databases in the world. And we've collected everything from just about everywhere we put together and let the computer correlate it. I mean, this, the climate change that they're talking about, they stopped their data is 1850. I mean, the little ice age basically bottomed in the late 1600s and we were starting to come out of that. Uh, but historically you go back, I mean, we've had ice ages, warming periods, it, the earth does this naturally. Uh, and it, honestly, you know, these people, there's, they don't want to, they come up with this theory that, oh, we're causing it. Um, I mean, here in Florida, we, you know, we get a red tide every now and then where all the fish die. And politicians are out there saying, oh, this is caused by farmers, etc. Vote for me and I'll make sure they don't ever do this again, whatever. I just Googled it. The first red tide was 1642 recorded by the Spanish. I think that was before, you know, chemicals or farmers. Uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, you have to understand what's going on. I mean, you know, it, whatever takes place, they immediately want to blame somebody and that's it. And the world is a natural cyclical environment. I mean, the earth spins around, you know, the... <clears throat> Procession of the equinox is 25,000 years. Uh, I mean, we move around in the universe. We're not, you know, we don't stay in one particular place. Um, everything is based upon a cycle. We were born, we live, we die. That's, that's a cycle. Everything has a cycle to it. Uh, and so we have to understand that. And, and these right. people don't do that. They, they exploit everything they possibly can for a, a different agenda. Now, exactly. I know you were talking about money. Um, yeah. I mean, as, as you know, I've, I've probably, you know, I mean, I was one of the largest international hedge fund managers. You know, we had well over 50% of the U.S. national debt under actual contract. So I, I've known institutions around the world. I mean, when 1997 Asian currency crisis happened, I was the one called in by China. So I went to China. I was actually helping them become capitalistic. I mean, it was a, f a fascinating experience. But, um, you know, wow. I have concluded one thing, that you take somebody like Bill Gates or, or Zuckerberg or whatever, you can't spend that kind of money, all right? I mean, you're talking about a billion dollars. I mean, you look at some of these houses they have, okay, they're 40, 50 million. How many, you know, how many houses could could you buy with a billion? 
I mean, it, you run out of things to buy. So what this really is, is power. Once you cross a certain line, it, it's no longer about making money. It's about power. And uh, sometimes, you know, I think, honestly, they become delusional, like George Soros uh, coming up with this one world uh, system. And, and he thinks that you can eliminate war by just a single government. And so he pushes for the UN. Uh, you know, I don't know if you make too much money and then you just lose all common sense or what. <laughs> but that seems to be the, the what happens here. Uh, you have Bill Gates running around saying, oh, it's climate change. That's going to be worse than COVID. Buying up all the farmland basically to, to, to stop, you know, meat production and things of this nature. Um, I mean, they're trying to force their agenda on us. And uh, I know a lot of these people. I mean, I've, I've had meetings for years back and forth when they were forming the Euro. Um, they came to us in, and attended our London conference back then. And they were saying, you know, that, oh, everybody will pay the same interest rate, etc. And I told the commission back then, I said, you, you do realize you're lying. There's no way you're going to have a, everybody's going to have a single interest rate. Uh, I mean, just look at the United States, federal interest rate, but you have 50 states and everybody pays a different interest rate according to the credit risk. Um, and, you know, all they did was transfer the volatility from currency to the bond markets. So you look at Europe and all the different countries are paying different interest rates depending upon their budgets or what, you know, what's going on. So, um, most of, honestly, I will, I will say this. I had to go to Capitol Hill for a meeting. And my son-in-law, he hears me saying about these things. He wanted to go with me. I said, I told him, I said, Craig, I said, are you really sure you want to see what I see? I said, you're never going to look at government the same again. No, I, I want to go. I said, all right, fine. I took him in to Capitol Hill. And we're in meetings with all the, you know, the top chiefs of staff and some politicians coming in. And when we left, he goes, my God, they don't know anything. I said, I told you. Um, the very simple questions are, you have to realize that, you know, there are no degrees to be the head of Canada or United States. All right. You don't go to school for this stuff. And I don't know anybody that goes to school and gets a degree. Do the, most people end up doing whatever they had a degree in? The answer is no, except maybe if you're a doctor or a lawyer. Um, so, That's so true. I mean, people just, you know, it's, it's all, you know, off the cuff sort of thing. And they don't really understand what they're doing, how to run an economy. And it's all this latest agenda. And that's it. Um, and unfortunately, uh, this is what's coming out. And um, I mean, when Klaus Schwab uh, started this whole great reset, his, his first volley into it was creating his, his movie, The Forum. And he invited me. I went up to for the New York private debut. I thanked him and said, you know, but yeah, I said, I found it very strange that um, Greta Thunberg basically had like center stage. I said, I thought this was supposed to be about you. And it was all about climate change and how we, you know, and that was the first shot across the bow. Uh, and ever since then, um, you know, again, Klaus has been more of a, uh, a Marxist sort of guy. And he, you know, talking about equality and things of this nature. But none of these people are equal. None of these people ever um, know what it's like to be on the street. You know, and I asked them, you know, quite frankly, I said, let's go to a college and say, OK, fine. Everybody that got an A, we're going to give you a C and we're going to give those points to the people that flunk. So everybody has a C. And they immediately look at you like, well, that's not fair. I said, oh, well, but it's equality, isn't it? Now you need a hard operation. Do you want the one that really had the A or the F? You know, um, but you know when you, they don't put it in terms of, of of experience, they put it in terms of money. 
oh, it's not fair. He he gets uh, fifty thousand. I only get thirty thousand. That's that's not fair. What's the difference here? And the difference is basically, you know, talent. We all have different things. I mean, I don't think I would make a very great brain surgeon. Um, and if I read a book, I mean, I don't. Do you want to be my first patient? <laughs> you know, uh, I mean. You can't learn things just by by reading a book. Sometimes you just have to go out and do things and see it. And and that's pretty much what I've done over my, you know, 40 years in, in doing this. I mean, I've been everywhere from Europe to Asia to, I mean, you name it. And I've watched, I've had a front row seat. Um, so it's, it's, these people, I think, have lost it. They're, they... Uh, it's a combination of uh, Bill Gates's climate theory and, and population. It's George Soros uh, trying to create a one world government. And it's Klaus Schwab using his clout basically at the World Economic Forum to push his equality agenda. So it's really a mix of these three philosophies. That's so what we're really looking at. Right. So when you look at this, do you think that they have come together uh, with the United Nations, Davos, um, uh, you know, Klaus Schwab, uh, uh, Bill Gates, like they, they are literally they have so much money. So now they have time to kind of manipulate and play. And we're we're their new game and how much power they can get in. Oh, wouldn't it be fun to see if the world would would operate a lot better with a few billion less people? And how might we go about doing something? You know what I mean? It gets so evil. And to really think that they're in collusion like this. And I, I feel that most people are beginning to think that's that's actually the reality. Well, how do you see it? Oh, it's, it's absolutely true. I mean, Schwab has put out um, a video. I don't know if it's still online, but you can get it off of our site. It's his 2030 agenda, which which Trudeau has signed on to. And he's got his eight little points there and you go through it. It's uh, removing democracy uh, and that the United States will no longer be a superpower. It will be shared among nations, which is the U.N., um, and you, you have to understand, most people in North America don't realize how they set up the EU. Um, this is what they really want. They want it, they're trying to kill democracy. And um, you can also find on our site, the FT did a, a piece, which I recorded and, and kept in case they wanted to delete it, when Trump won in 2016. and was about how all the leaders at at uh, Davos uh, were scared. They were like, oh my God, what would happen if we really got voted out or we would lose power? And so that's why they really didn't like Trump. It wasn't so much what he said or how bad he was or this, that, the other thing. It was the fact that he was what they call a populist. He wasn't a career politician. So he wasn't one of them. And um, they have been structuring things if you look at europe you only get to vote for parliament parliament has no power to overrule the commission nobody in the commission runs for office the head of the eu is selected by the other politicians all right there is no possible way a european can stand up and vote the government out of power impossible they don't stand for election and um, this is really what, you know, I mean, in Canada, there, there you, you had one guy put in a bill to suspend elections during a pandemic. This right. is the agenda. They don't want elections because we're too stupid to know what's good enough for us. Uh, and um, I'm not even sure with these vaccines, you know, what is the real agenda? Is, is it ma mainly to separate the sheep from the wolves? Um, do they really have any idea of that there are risks to these things or they just don't care? It, it, they don't you know, care. there it's kind of hard to say. Um, why so would you know, you, you, it is, it's very, very disturbing. And, um, I, I just, uh, I have no faith in, in these people whatsoever. Um, and I was asked, 
honestly, you know, a couple of months ago, if I would be interested in getting back into politics as far as advising in Washington. And it wanted me to uh, talk Trump out of not running in 2024 and to talk to DeSantis into running. They said, oh, he's a much better administrator. And, and I said, you know, you guys just never see the reality. You, you think that this is a baseball game and you can, you know, get back in 2022, whatever. You know, don't you realize what's happening to the, the country? And they don't. And this is both parties. They, they're, they're, they're insulated there. Uh, and you're finding the same thing in Canada. I mean, it's you, you say you have no opposition. Uh, and we get people that, you know, will, will argue on both sides, but will they actually change anything? Uh, it's hard. It's really hard to say. I mean, I like DeSantis. I'm in Florida and I think he's got a lot of guts. And when, you know, Biden actually said he would post guards and prevent people from coming to Florida, he stood up and he said he was going to call out the National Guard to defend Floridians against the government. I was like... Great, give me a gun. I'll go out there with you. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it's you know, he really does have a lot of uh, guts, and he's looked at the real facts. Um, I mean, I would, you know, I got vax. I've had you know, flu vaccines and stuff and different. I mean, I'm not, I would say, an anti-vaxer, but I certainly wouldn't get this. Um, right. And I don't like the fact that government's involved. So. Absolutely. Usually the FDA is there to protect us. We need approval. We have to go through years, et cetera, to get these approval and studies and prove things. Here it's like nothing has to be done. And now the politicians, you take out there saying you have to be vaccinated or you don't go to college or this or whatever. Once the politician has got, gotten in, now they cannot admit a mistake. That's the problem. All right. And I would say after, honestly, after 40 years of dealing with these governments, and I mean, from Asia to Europe to everywhere, um, I can sum it up this way. If I walked into the office and I said, if we don't do this, 25 million people will die tomorrow. They'll say, well, maybe you're wrong. And they would much rather the 25 million people die. And the reason I say that is, is that if I were to run for president and I said, vote for me because I saved your job, you're going to look at me and say, well, how do I know I would have lost it? I can't really get score any points. It's better you lose your job. Then I run for office and say, vote for me. I'll get the guy that did it. Hmm. So they, they love crisis. I mean, I've been called in on just about every possible crisis, you know, since really the the very early 80s uh and uh i i've just seen it firsthand i mean i was called in uh one of 35 people when they were forming the g5 which is now the g20 and at first you know i thought well gee i guess i made it i made it to the top of the list whatever and then you get there and you find out oh gee mr armstrong how do we save the world oh sorry your 10 minutes is up next and then they stand up and they say whatever conclusions they wanted to, and they want to pre just pretend that they have listened to experts, and they never do. Wow. They just do whatever they want to do. Uh, that is and so scary. That is so scary to us. Because <laughs> if you're not it's saving the world, then what are we going to do? Because we we have no voice. We're not invited. You know, we are not invited to the table. And I hear what you're saying. Like it's a it's a brief process and. You know, you're working through and then ultimately maybe the key figures, they just do whatever the heck they want. You know, they, do. they, they don't um, like I say with the vaccine. My concern is the fact that the politicians are involved. They now cannot say they were wrong. Right. That's a problem. So that means we, we have lost anybody to, to view this. Uh, are these vaccines safe? Or are they not? You can't. That's why I said, you know, you know, I trust Dr. Pepper more than Dr. Fauci. I mean, it's, <laughs> yes. Um, and he thinks he's going by the science. You know, we have a clip of him just saying, you know, he's nothing but the science. But 
Uh, where's the hard facts, science, data? Uh, you're a kind of guy, you're looking at hard numbers and you can sort of make some calculations based on real data. Uh, not him, he just changes it. He changes it all the time. And if he has hard data, like he knew that hydroxychloroquine was good in 2005, he still, because of whatever's going on in his brain, He's not going to support President Trump when President Trump comes out and says something. And I've been on hydroxychloroquine for 16 years. And I know for a fact, that's why I started paying attention to what they're saying about hydroxychloroquine. And I knew it was a lie. And so I followed so closely everything when the Lancet came out with a big study, you know, that was supposed to be the science, the data. Well, then as soon as, you know, real doctors started like glomming on them and what a bad um, you know, basically what the experiments were all completely wrong. Well, then they took off and they left their office, but Lancet doesn't really make a big stink about, or nor the news about reporting that, oh, that Lancet study, yeah, it's been removed, debunked. The guy took off. He's a total scam artist. And by the way, hydroxychloroquine is safe. So we don't trust anybody now. We don't trust anyone. We don't trust them. And with our money, the inflation and all of that, you know, I, I don't know if inflation is good or bad. Well, what do you think? It, it, inflation is basically, uh, this one is interesting. I mean, we had, the computer had forecast this out of bef actually before 2020. And it said this would be an inflationary wave uh, and it would be based upon shortages. And it's interesting at, at the time, I mean, before COVID, the computer's coming up with this and it was like, shortages interesting i mean i and and you can see by the lockdowns etc and preventing people from traveling th they effectively have wiped out the uh, the global supply chain and we are looking at all sorts of things going up in price it, it's across the board it's it's it reminds me more of when we had the opec crisis in the 70s and then suddenly you saw that oil went into absolutely everything, manufacturing costs, plastic, etc. And then uh, it's the same sort of thing. So uh, the dollar value of your currency and purchasing uh, will decline. That's what real inflation is about. And it's not the standard things that people want to talk about uh, that Oh, it's uh, increase the money supply, you then create inflation. That's been proven to be completely false. Uh, it, it's part of the problem of what we're dealing with right now. It, it's, it's what people believe is, is really the, the critical factor. So that they've kind of increasing... controls it. Okay. Yeah, they, they've been increasing the money supply ever since 2008. And there's been no inflation. Why? Because uh, as long as people don't trust the future, they don't spend. They've been saving. Okay. It's now once actually um, Biden took office, it kind of shifted the confidence level that people are now questioning, you know, government. Biden only has, you know, uh, a 50.4% majority, which is basically saying 50 50 in the country. And, and for, you know, that's aside from whether elections were rigged or not rigged. Um, so he doesn't really have a mandate. And then this, these lockdowns have caused everything to start rising in price. I mean, I had bought a new refrigerator in December. It took me three months to get it. I asked them, you know, what's, what's the problem? They said, oh, well, the chips come from Thailand. I said, oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, everything you, you try to do is just is delayed. Uh, people have been real estate. I mean, they've been bailing out of particularly the blue states in the U.S., but uh, they've been bailing out of cities because, I mean, they've been uh, the cities are typically the Democratic uh, thresholds, and that's where the lockdowns have been the worst. So, I mean, over nearly a million kids have left the public school system in new york i mean down here in florida uh on the on the west coast by palm beach they're saying over a, a million people have left new york city alone which are millionaires and billionaires uh and 
even a lot of Wall Street has left and it's now being done in, in Boca Raton. Uh, so f- Florida is kind of like becoming the new quasi Wall Street, really, that uh, nobody wants to talk about. But this is where things are, are taking place. Um, right. I can tell you driving around, it's, uh, uh, it, you know, it's the traffic has probably doubled in the last year. Uh, right. and that's a little disappointing for me, but. <laughs> uh, so are uh, you, I mean, be, being that you're, you're from Florida, is it fully opened up down there? This just a side oh, note yeah. as we circle back to uh, circle back uh, to to money, but yeah, I mean that you're living our dream right now. Yeah, so, no, know. I can walk into the food store. Don't have to have a mask. Um, some stores still make their uh, their staff have a mask, but that's about it. Hmm. Um, so, and you see some people walking around with with a mask on, and and you know that's their prerogative. But, right. uh, but mostly it's all open. So, you know, it, everything's open. Yeah. With inflation, is it re- being reported honestly then? And and is there deception in it so that so that we're making decisions uh, that are according to the globalist ideas? Uh, yeah, I mean, the the Federal Reserve is pretty much saying that, oh, this is really just transitory. They want to painted as just a temporary blip because of some of the shortages of the lockdown. But our model is showing that's not the case. You've seriously disrupted a lot of things and we're moving up into uh, into 2024 before this particular inflationary wave will, will peak out. And uh, this is also you've been caused by a lot of uh, shutting down international travel. Uh, and you know, it, it's just crazy. And plus, plus, then you have weather going. You know, despite the fact they want to call it global warming, uh, Germany had the coldest April and May in in more than a hundred years. Um, hmm. Crops, you know, the froze down in Spain, and in, uh, in Italy. I was just on the phone just the other day. Um, there's a shortage of cans. They can't even can the tomatoes that. Uh, that they that they grow, so wow. they, they were, they're concerned about a lot of the crops just going to have to be thrown away. Yeah, uh, the so the concern are, for food is growing. Um, like you were saying yeah. about uh, um, Bill Gates, you know, buying up farmland. That's a very confusing thing. Um, you know, which kind of leads into real estate as well. I mean, the the whole thing it's just so. Con- what does Bill Gates want with farmland? Uh, basically, he wants to. Uh, introduce things that he only approves and he's definitely yeah. wants to make sure that it's not used for red for raising uh cattle or red meat. right yeah thanks a lot bill um so the the heart the the housing market um i can only assume that that housing is going up down there in florida and places like that where everybody wants to live i mean they're hightailing it out of california with the crazy stuff been been going there and they're heading over there but in canada we, we've been told for a long time that, like, especially right here where I am in, in um, Vancouver, the greater Vancouver area, British Columbia, we have some of the how, highest housing prices in Canada, us and downtown Toronto. Everyone says it's going to take a crash. Interest rates are going to go up. Uh, what's your thought on that? Well, interest rates are definitely going to be moving higher. Um, <clears throat> but more on the on the the public side versus the the private side uh major capital is starting to realize that government is lost its mind um they're <laughs> they are yeah. really looking at as i said because they increased the money supply from 2008 and um they didn't get inflation they now believe in this new modern monetary theory that they can create money without inflation. So this is what's going on. And they're looking at just funding things, uh, paying people to stay home, things of this nature. Um, there's real shortages in labor down here. Um, I mean, Florida, the governor just stopped the $300 bonus um, 
on top of unemployment. Because everywhere you go, there's signs that it says, you know, help wanted, help wanted. But people are earning more on unemployment and the 300 hours extra bonuses for the lockdown stuff that they don't need. And so why should they go work if they can earn the same or if not higher? Yeah. Um, so with uh, Keynesian uh, economics isn't that where you you just sort of you spend more and you spend your way out of a, a looming crisis? Uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Keynes has has been maligned. I would say over the years, uh, if you really look at what he had said, uh, you can uh, when demand is down, like in the Great Depression, like I was saying, people are hoarding their money that, that they don't want to spend. That the government should increase its spending even out the demand, right? But he also said uh, you can lower taxes during a recession to also stimulate. So they only take I like the that. fact that you can increase the deficit. They never want to lower the taxes. And they, they just spend uh, in a deficit every year, even when there are no recessions. So, you know, they call it Keynesian economics, but no, honestly, he never advocated anything like this. Okay. Um, this is just absolute corruption from, from the political side. Right. And um, it, so, it's, so, it's just sorry. really bad. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'll, I'll give you an example. In, in the 90s, I was called in by Congress to when the Republicans had control of, of, a, of, of Congress, and they wanted me to come up with a plan to uh, turn Social Security into a, a national wealth fund. So I, I said, okay, fine. So I designed everything out that, you know, we got in track records from different fund managers, etc. And the Democrats wouldn't vote for it. And I was in meetings. Is that, you know, they wanted to say, well, when we get back into power, we want to change the fund managers. I said, this has got nothing to do with who we voted for. We make the decision based upon his track record. We don't ask who we voted for, Democrat or Republican. Um, they would never agree to that. And and this is part of the problem. Um, and even in Australia, um, I, I know you have a lot of Asian uh, <clears throat> viewers there in Vancouver. Uh, I actually had the mandate from Hong Kong. and to go down to Australia to try and buy land. Initially, they wanted thinking about moving. And I met with uh, the treasurer, and then he was the, the prime minister, Paul Keating. And I said, look, you know, I, I got everything. I said, I want to buy the island. No, how about if we take this, you know, the upper corner of Canada, allow them to come in? No. And I finally said to him, I said, you know, plunk, Point blank, I said, what is this? I mean, I got a checkbook here. I can pay off your national debt. And I said, is this a racist thing? And he said, no. Uh, he said, the problem was, and he was quite honest with me because he was labor. If they let people from Hong Kong in, they would vote conservative and change the politics. So the labor government refused to allow Hong Kong to come in. Now, I was in the middle of those negotiations, and I see the same thing going on again. All right. Canadians, oh, we have to make sure they don't come to America so much because they would vote for what? Republicans because they're leaving the other side. Mm. <clears throat> Go down to Mexico, let everybody in you possibly can because they would then vote for the Democrats. This is the way they really think. Wow. Um, and That's interesting. I mean, I, so if we actually want to move to the United States, yeah, it could be harder for us from Canada. We are done with this whole left, you know, leaning thing. Um, with with interest rates lower than, do you recommend buying a home uh, at this time? Is, is real estate if still you, a good investment? If you lock in the interest rate, don't do a floating rate or anything like that. Yeah, um, and lock it in for I mean, a while, I guess. I mean, we're probably looking at uh, real estate peaking out more around 2023. Uh, we still have uh, people that are fleeing largely the cities. 
uh, I would stay away from necessarily downtown where wherever they are. The lockdowns have been the worst. Um, so, right. uh, you know, I was, you know, I mean, e even if you look at what's going on in Washington or in Oregon, I mean, five counties petitioning Idaho to, to leave. Uh, I mean, uh, in in California, they're talking about the you know the the governor may have a very difficult time you know not being kicked out. Uh, it's, I mean, I, these there is resistance and it's building up. Uh, and I mean, you have protests in Toronto, etc. Uh, it, it's tough to get rid of um, Trudeau, and I think that they will definitely try to stole any elections possible. Uh, Trudeau seems to be uh, the lapdog of, of Klaus Schwab. And I think that they view that if they can really uh, push Canada all the way through, uh, then that would then be an example for the United States that they can point to. But it's this is not working. It's, it's just not working. And, um, right. you know, they really think destroying as many jobs as possible with with fossil fuels and etc and rebuilding this economy green um something like that is takes place naturally and it takes you know like 120 years to do you're not going to pull this off in two, in two to three years it's going to take um, a while do, do you uh what about our monetary system of uh, canada versus the united states so our dollar is at 83. Uh, do you have any predictions? I mean, I, I'm not exactly certain why that's happening, probably because of Biden and his bad policies, but looks like our Canadian dollar is creeping up. And I don't know if it'd ever get to par, which I've only known of that one time in my ever following it many, many years ago. That would be cool if that happened because that would give us more, you know, buying power as Canadians. But, uh, how, you know, what about the monetary system? I don't think you, you'll get up that high, but I mean, most of this is um, initial capital. Yes, there's very concern about Biden uh, that um, he doesn't really have the confidence of capital at, at all, no matter what the mainstream media wants to say. Um, but I mean, we're I mean, we're looking at a lot of shifting and um, I, I can't give the name, but one of the a very large um, pension fund, um, they sold all their government bonds and they started moving into corporate. And S&P went in to, to audit them and they said, oh, you're taking on more risk. And they said, no, they, they said they're following our models. And they said they did their own due diligence and um, concluded that we were correct that um, the biggest risk of defaults are always government, not private corporations. So um, mm. S&P didn't really know what to say. They, they left their rating alone and they walked out. Mm. Uh, but it's true, governments default all the time. I mean, you can go on eBay and buy all the bonds so that you, you know, and decorate your walls with so them. That's scary. Uh, <laughs> this wow. is what they do. Yeah. Um, it, when I've been in meetings and I've told them, look, this is this is not going to end very well. And the response has always been the same. Yeah, but we, we're the government. We can we can always, you know, do whatever is necessary. And they they don't see things cyclically or from a long term perspective. And they always think that this time it's different and they're going to be in control. And, and I see it weakening significantly. Uh, I mean, you're doing this show. We, we have been talking about this type of a subject five years ago. Hmm. Um, that shows you that little by little, we are moving towards this collapse in confidence in government. And that's Definitely. what our computer is doing. Right. And, and then what happens? Like, is this, is this a, a dark forecast, you know? Well, it's dark and, and with a, a ray of light at the end. Um, I, I do think that it, by 2032 is when we end up with a complete new political system. Okay. Uh, 
I think um, at that point in stage, it will be, I'm hoping more for a di direct democracy end of career politicians, etc. But I um, mean, the last time this happened was like the American Revolution. It was a revolution against monarchy. Then the French did it, you know, and and even Britain, they took really the power away from the queen, although she's there. Um, so we're in, we're moving towards this again. And I mean, that's part of why Trump was elected. They, people did like what he had to say and, you know, term limits, things of this nature. Um, did, I mean, despite the fact a lot of people thought he was arrogant or whatever, but oh, I think an awful lot of people are beginning to realize that term limits is maybe a pretty good idea. Um, I mean, career politicians are, are just the world's worst. Um, like I said, they, there's no degree to be a career politician, and this is just what they do. Right. Uh, like and, Nancy Pelosi somehow has so much money. Uh, some of these others, like you don't even really know how they made it on their salaries. But once you get in there, um, boy, the goodies are all there. And you might forget the original reason that you had a passion to run for, for politics. And I, I, it's so sad. The corruption is so huge and you forget about the people. Well, and, and if I go back to 1985, when I, I testified for the formation of the G5, um, I became kind of disillusioned with it, and I wrote a, a, a letter to Reagan and forced the White House to, to respond to me. And immediately they were saying, oh, you'll never be called again. You went out of committee, blah, 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 and all this other kind of stuff. Why don't you be a good boy? Just produce studies that, that we tell you what the conclusions are, and you can earn 5 or $10 million a year. I said, thanks a lot, but I don't like writing fiction. <laughs> you know? Uh, but this is every bill you. they pass, they need somebody to put out a study. Okay. So, and they tell you what the conclusion is supposed to be. All right. So, you know, Obamacare. Oh, okay. Put out a study that this is going to, we need, say it's going to save $200 billion. Oh, okay. Fine. And they stretch every fact that they possibly can to get there. Um, none of these things are, are true. And, you're, you're beginning to see with Fauci that he's a bureaucrat, all right? He's never had to stand for election. Even a, a career politician will not um, constantly change their position as much as this guy has, Right. all right? Because he never has to stand for election. So one day, oh yeah, no, very beginning, NASDAQ are, are worthless. That's what all the studies showed from 1918 then all of a sudden you have to wear a mask. Then you need two masks. Then um, uh, it, it's, it's, he just makes up stories as he goes. Um, I mean, that satire site Babylon B was kind of funny. They had Fauci debating him 17 versions of himself. Yeah. Um, I mean, which is really, it's sad to say, but it's true. Right. I mean, Absolutely. This is, this is what a, bureaucrat is versus a politician. A politician won't flip flop as much like that. Because Fauci doesn't have to stand for election. He never pays attention to what he says. Whatever I have to say at the moment to make you shut up and I get off the TV screen. That's good enough. Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> all it is. Right. Yeah. Such you a know, good description. Have to, yeah, and I think this is the process that we're in. It's it's the decline and fall of the confidence in government. Right. That we no longer trust either side, just as you were saying before, do we even have an opposition in government? Right. Um, it's when you no longer trust either side, mm -hmm. then, and you have a government going after its people, you lost the very basis for having a civilization to begin with. Uh, civilization is, is basically everybody coming together and we're all supposed to benefit from it. All right. You bake the bread, so I don't have to, but I make something else that you need. All right. Um, that's what a civilization is. That's what Adam Smith said. You know, it's, 
uh, it's the invisible hand. We all end up making it work. It doesn't come from above from some politician. Uh, and when they start getting power and start pitting one against the other, etc., then it starts to gradually decline. Uh, it's no longer then beneficial for me to be part of it. I mean, uh, it, it gets to be absurd. Uh, and uh, it, it's kind of like At Atlas Shrugged, really. I mean, you raise the taxes far enough. All right, fine. I just quit. I won't work. Thank you. You know, um, right. I'll walk the beach with my dog. Right. Um, well, they're, they're talking about this great reset. Is that a real thing? Is it coming? Is it good or bad? What do you think about that? This is what they're trying to do. Yes. Um, uh, it will not work. Uh, it, you know, it, to, <laughs> they've tried to get me on board, I would say for the last 25 years, but, um, I disagree with them. Um, but they like say this idea of this great reset is, uh, if you look at Schwab's eight points for his, you know, 2030 agenda. Uh, it is the United States will no longer be a superpower and that will be shared by the UN. Uh, this is the great reset, uh, a single one world government. Uh, they're talking about, a you know, the UN should have the power to tax everybody in the world. Uh, it, it's absurd what they're doing. Uh, and you can't talk to these people. I mean, they sit around in a five star hotel drinking, you know, they're scotch and, and soda or whatever and they all oh yes they all pat each other on the back and yes this is the way the world should work have they ever actually gone out and, and worked themselves uh on the street the answer is no they don't even talk to you you're you're beneath their level to even have a conversation this is really unfortunately it's what i have witnessed over right. 40 years of dealing with these people Wow, I, I had no idea, you know, I mean, obviously you have been in this an awful long time and it's fascinating to me, you know, to hear that it's been in the works for that long. Um, you know, to us, we're like, okay, you know, it's end of the world. Some of us believe that maybe that was predicted, that things like a, while, a one world government or something like that. But, you know, now, like, basically, we're worried about these vaccination passports. I mean, what if you can't do business? What if you can't have a job? Um, this is only phase one, right? This is, and they're not all yes. that successful. Some, some, uh, airlines are now saying, oh, they'd like to have the, these vaccination passports. And some are saying, yeah, actually we would prefer if you've had the vaccine, you don't fly because you might get blood clots in our airplane. So we're exactly. in a real mix up right now, but they're going to perfect. This is my concern over the next 10 to 20 years of what they're really trying to do. And, and that's going to be a problem. Well, I think their time frame is a little shorter than that. Okay. Um, they're trying to pull a lot of this off by next year. Right. Um, yeah. It's the warp speed uh, plan. So, but do yes. you think they're going to be able to do that? No, I think they will fail. Okay. Uh, you're getting an awful lot of resistance everywhere. Yes. Uh, but um, I'll say something else that I did. Before 1999, I would uh, also be asked to go um, by the Republicans to go meet with people who wanted to run for president. And they were told I was there to advise them on the world economy, etc. But it was also uh, I was there to ask to review them. And then when I would go back, they would ask me, what do you think? Is he smart enough to handle it, etc. It was, it was really a vetting process. Then in 1999, uh, I got a call and they said, well, okay, fine. We want you to fly down and meet with Bush Jr. Uh, in Texas. I said, yeah, okay, fine. They said, oh, no, but this one's different. I said, what do you mean it's different? And they said, oh, no, he's really stupid. I said, what? I mean, years of going through this, are they intelligent enough to handle it to suddenly, is he stu he's stupid? And I draw the line in the sand in 1999 and from there on the bureaucrats wanted to get control and Trump to, to a large degree was naive. I think he thought that if he became president, he, you're actually in charge of something and you're not. 
there were everybody was stabbing him in the back every which way possible. <laughs> uh, and so now they have the perfect setup. They have Biden and they have Harris. Harris has zero experience in international affairs. Um, Biden, you know, I, I really do think he has mental problems and dementia, really. Um, right. And it sure appears I've that way. I've encountered people like that. It, it's like, and, and they'll be okay today. And then five minutes later, they forget who you are. Uh, and so <clears throat> it's the bureaucracy that's really running things now. It's not Biden. And it's not Harris. They're just the placeholders. Um, right. with the napkin holders at the table. That's it. And so I think it's much more serious than that. And they're trying to push this agenda through very rapidly because uh, they are concerned of what happens if they uh, lose the elections for the, you know, for Capitol Hill in 2022. Uh, but they're already starting to see um some Democrats, as our computer's been projecting that the Democratic Party will also split. So you're beginning to see some of the more conservative Democrats are not in line with- Like Manchin. What, yeah, I mean, they're starting to break. Uh, hmm. And then you have like AOC. I mean, even the, the, the normal left Democrats won't go, go that far. Um, right. So, I mean, it's, so do you think it's that they're just pushing it too far and they're overplaying their hand and that's actually going to be very good for us? Yes, yes. I, I think that's why it fails. Um, I think it was significant. We had a very important date, which was May 8th, for a shift in the trend of confidence in the government. And ever since, I mean, that week was, that turned out to be uh, Bill Gates' divorce. Um and uh, and then we've seen nothing but Fauci going on. Uh, right. But uh, people don't quite understand. Uh, and Bill Gates was involved with Epstein. Uh, yeah. Most of the press portrayed that as, oh, just him with young girls, etc. But look, he could have gone to Europe. The legal age is 14. Why do that here? Why bring over the, you know, you know, uh, Prince Andrew and everybody that he had were people of substance and power. All right. Uh, this wasn't about, you know, young girls. It was about using young girls to put them in a blackmail position. I believe that's what Gates was doing was right. he was involved with Epstein to say, oh, this is a pretty good, it's called the honey trap. Mm -hmm. All right. If you don't do what I say, this is here's the photos. OK. And I really think it was more of a blackmail thing, which is why Epstein could never go to trial. Um, right. And why he was killed or whatever's happened. He was definitely killed. I mean, yeah. if, if he was really on suicide watch, they have a cell there uh, where they strap down your arms and your hands. If you're really on suicide watch and you can't do anything. Right. He was not. Um, so no, they just turned I mean, off the video on him. <laughs> yeah. So Absolutely. something happened that too many people would be compromised. They don't, they don't want it to get out. It's uh, a little bit like, uh, the Picton, uh, thing that we have going on here. We have a Picton farm and, um, the people that are compromised in that is still the talk of the town. And, you know, it was 20 years ago. Um, yeah, so yeah. I, I get it. I, I see what you're saying. That was, that was the deal. And then. I think the legal age is Turkey is 18. Um, most of the rest of Europe is 14 to 16. So it makes no sense that if you're really into young girls, why would you be doing it here? Uh, right. it just, and you got money and like, you can go anywhere you want. Exactly. You and it doesn't have to. Europe, hmm. But it wouldn't have been a crime. So you wouldn't have been able to say, gee, I got these photographs. Okay. That's the only missing element between the two. Right. So, and I think that's why Gates was involved with Epstein. Right. And, but, but and, you don't seem to be able to prosecute the people that are immune from it, which is everybody protected by the left. Uh, I've heard all kinds of rumors about what's on Hunter Biden's um, laptop, including pictures with younger aged people. 
And um, I, I don't know if that's true. Um, I've, I've heard it talked about by very well-known, um, you know, hosts of reputable shows. And yet the, F, the FBI won't touch that laptop and won't bring justice in this case. So everything's corrupt. Oh, everything. I mean, if you look at when um, the FBI, Comey, interviewed Hillary, all right? Oh, he didn't keep any notes. They always keep notes. Because if you lie to an FBI agent, that's jail time. So the fact that he did not keep any notes was to make sure she could never be charged. All right? Um, it, all this is just very, it's, 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 nonsense really they will not ever prosecute anybody on their own team it's like they're playing and us for fools you know they, they basically bad. yes they they know the press will only report whatever the, they tell them to report um the press is and, a, it's a it's a huge loss of the balancing act isn't it once you own the press or you've somehow managed to buy them off or silence them or they are complicit in the silencing of all voices uh, other voices then you've you've really lost like that is a that is why the founding fathers wanted freedom of the press and yet we really don't have that um and people that they're, they're just either they're afraid they don't want to lose their jobs i just think of a reporter okay the lowest rung basically go get this story go get oh no don't talk about this don't talk about that so right there, they're being trained. I'll lose my job if I actually bring up something important that's going on. And so it's, it's um, yeah, it's a mess. Yes, no, I, I happen to know, I can't say, but one of the top five newspapers in, in the world. Um, they were, uh, I know somebody that wanted to go check the lab leak story from the beginning. Um, we talk often and they were not allowed to. Suddenly they were given the green light to go do so. All right, and uh, it's it, it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, is, I mean, I've given some very important contacts. I mean, I think uh, <clears throat> from what I know strategically, what was said coming out of the, the WEF, et cetera, in, in early, and you can go to my site and you can see, I mean, I, I put it out, all right? It, they were saying back then, uh, a virus is coming, all right? Now, how do you know that, all right? I think it was <clears throat> deliberately uh, released. Uh, I don't think they were trying to create genocide. And if you look at this, uh, this virus, it, it, I mean, you you got a 99.5% chance of surviving it. Why push right. everybody into vaccines? Um, it, do you, it, do you just, think there's they, any chance, um, do you think, Martin, that they actually intended it to be worse? Because they did then make predictions. Like Fauci can't shut up, right? He's got he's got to be the guy that says the you know there will be a surprise outbreak, right? And then oh, there's a surprise outbreak, and he seems to be he likes to be the predictor maybe because of his ego or whatever. But then they make they had models sort of saying that there would be a lot more death, and I wonder if we're just we're just blessed and lucky and protected by Almighty God that we did not have a worse virus. Perhaps. Um, Perhaps. I haven't looked at the virus code itself. I was given the uh, the code uh, for Ferguson that was came out of that model that predicted the you know why we should have lockdowns. Right. Um, and you can go to my site. I I wrote the critique on it when I got the code, and then somebody else in Germany, I think, and I got a hold of the code and did the same thing. I I mean. I looked at this thing. It was like some. It was a child's game. I called it basically Sim City. Uh, it, it said you got to run the same, you know, run the program five times and then take the average or whatever it said. I mean, it, it was like a child's game. I mean, it was the most unsophisticated model I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I wouldn't even call it a model. Uh, yet this is what they used. Imperial College put this out, all oh, the death toll, etc. Um, and it's it's just 
It was just total nonsense. But I was right. given the code by people high up in, in Britain, and I looked at it, and I gave my review of it. I said, this is a joke, complete joke. Thank you for doing that. Um, if, and if then they Gates break their paid, own rules. Yeah. I mean, if, if Gates paid $25 million for it, they're glad. I'll be glad to do the same thing for you for a million. It'll take me about 20 minutes. <laughs> Could have got you cheaper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the thing about good people like you, you know, is um, you're not going to be bought off, but the, these people will be bought off. And so we're really in a, a very tyrannical era. And um, with the Wuhan lab, you know, the jury's out on if it was leaked or uh, wh whether they literally allowed it to, to be sent out to be a sabotage of the world. But what, one of the things, there's three people that kind of got sick at Wuhan lab. And that makes me think that it could have potentially been an accident because uh, someone got sick. On the other hand, if somebody was going to sabotage and let it out, well, they needed people to get sick. So maybe there's nothing at all to that. It just seems that the timing of it, you know, coinciding with the upcoming Trump uh, elect re-election or not election, a lot of people still believe that he actually won, uh, you know, to try to actually believe that, that, um, that Biden got more votes than Obama. I mean, right there, just please stop, come up with something else because that's ridiculous. And in actual fact, all of the timing and the coincidences are, are so huge that it's hard not to think that they literally used it. And then you've got our prime minister talking about this reset. It's time for a reset. You've got, you know, the leaders of the world talking about the reset, all based sort of on COVID, like COVID happens, then the lockdowns and they implemented and then they war gamed it, you know, at the World Economic Forum or um, so, something just seems very like nothing that we thought was is and now we're waking up to the fact that it's a lot worse than we thought as far as a real takeover well the build back better is a slogan that was created by the world economic forum and it was being bantered around in the january 2019 meeting okay mm -hmm. so one year before COVID. right um and this has all been mm -hmm very well orchestrated it, yeah it's, uh, this is what's going on it, and i mean it, it is build back better is a slogan it comes from a single place i mean when was the last time you ever saw world leaders that you have on your screen that ever all had the same policy exactly i mean i can't remember that ever happening yeah. um uh, honestly, I mean, it's just absurd. Um, yeah, I mean, and I've really meetings, suspect. And I, I've gone to meetings in, in, in Brussels, and I said, okay, fine, I want to bring our uh, CEO from, from the UK over with me. Oh, you can't do that. I said, why? Well, he's British. You know, it, it's like, I'm American, so I'm okay. But I can't bring a European with me because then they would be biased towards their own individual country. I mean, this hmm. is the way it, it really. How looks. strange! It's, it's very, very interesting. Yes, um, it is. Um, and what? Years ago, I dealt with the Canadian government, and I was told the same thing. I said, "How come you can talk to me, but you can't talk to like the minister of Nova Scotia?" And right. Basically same thing came to me said, you're not Canadian hmm. so they can talk to me but if they talk to to Nova Scotia two minutes before they they spoke to British Columbia then that offends British Columbia so they can't even talk to the financial ministers of, of the individual provinces right um, it's it, people don't realize how intricate all of this really is um, so it's just weird over the years. Uh, a lot of people have asked me how did I ever end up in the position I am, and I think it's just largely that it's kind of a club, and I feel like sometimes I'm like the the priest in the confessional. You know, they need to confess their sins to somebody. I don't know. And it's you. But, you know, so Australia will talk to me because they know Britain will talk. You know, so wow. it's just weird. It's just very very strange. Um, 
Because they somehow, can't even in their own place. Right, right. Somehow you've you've developed a name that people trust. I mean, you've made some predictions and that that are right. You you know you you stand by your machines and your graphs, and and it ends up being right. Um, and so th that's a very good thing. And the best part about it is, I just think that you have integrity where we actually trust you. You're speaking things that you wouldn't say if you were actually in with them. And so I just thank you for that. I mean, that's a very courageous thing. A lot of people um, on the line and everything are wondering about gold and silver. Everyone seems to be saying that's a good thing. Are you in agreement with that? Well, gold and silver, is that a good place to invest? Um, I think you have to be concerned a little bit on the, uh, the problem with gold in the sense that they are tracking everything they possibly can. Um, so it's, I think there was a, a woman from Canada that hopped on a plane with some $30,000 worth of gold and they confiscated it from her. Um, it's, it's not like the old days where we could pick up, uh, you know, 20 or 30 ounces, put it in our pocket, hop on the plane and go someplace. Uh, I think silver is probably more movable and maybe a little bit more practical as far as uh, a barter on the on the street is concerned. Uh, I mean, I would more recommend like the old silver coins. Um, but uh, that you have to look at it from a standpoint of uh, a kid in Starbucks, okay? And you say, oh, well, here's a, here's a silver bar. Well, how do I know that's really silver? All right, um, or gold. So if you had a coin that said, "Okay, fine, here's a here's a quarter, and it's 1960." Oh, okay, fine. I know the 1960s are okay. You know, you're you're dealing with a little. Um, you have to look at it from that perspective. Um, but I do think that the silver will uh, be more movable than the gold. Okay. Uh, so better and, silver uh, right now. Yeah, I mean, I think gold is, is, I mean, if you want to, you know, dig a hole in your backyard and, and, you know, that's fine. I would be very concerned about keeping gold in a storage facility uh, or anything like that that the government knows about. Um, hmm. And they seem to know Roosevelt, an awful lot. Yeah, when the Roosevelt confiscated gold, if you had gold in the bank, it was gone, Okay. But if you had gold in your sock drawer, you still had it. Okay, that's why there's plenty of $20 gold pieces still around, etc. Um, hmm. They didn't go door to door confiscating gold. But if you had it in a storage facility or a bank, it was gone. Wow. Um, so I would be concerned about that. Um, okay. That, uh, that if they sense. decide they want to go after that, I mean, you know, that's that's a that's going to be a problem right um re recession stock market crash is that a potential up ahead or what do you think not yet um yes it can it can pull down right now and make a, a retest support but <clears throat> we have to understand that the amount of money invested in government bonds sovereign debt around the world is 10 times that of equities so the stock market's been moving up and it's been largely doing so because there's no other place to put big money. Um, and real estate's been moving up. Uh, antique uh, cars have been rising. Uh, coins, stamps, uh, collectibles in general, art. People are, are taking money and putting it just about in, in every which way you possible. So they're all going up. Um, I mean, some more than others or whatever, but um, uh, it, it's just the way it is. I mean, like uh, housing, I can say that houses like down here in Florida that, that were maybe $750,000 that had a dock and on the water. Um, last year, they're already probably a million and a half today. Um, they've bet. gone up that much. Right. Uh, so... But I would say probably average house is, is most likely up 15 to 20% from a couple of years ago down yeah. here. Well, everyone's so jealous of you all down there. And so they, they just want to get there.
But here in Canada, um, our our prime minister, he just keeps, he donates billions here. He spends billions there, millions and millions of dollars constantly. We're over a trillion dollars in debt, I hear. And so we wonder like, where's, where's the money? Aren't we actually already bankrupt and we're pretending that we're not? I don't know. I'm not really a good economics person, but it, that does seem wrong. Uh, this is this MMT that <clears throat> they are just creating money uh, and right. they think that it won't be inflationary, but it it will be inflationary, not simply because of that, but they, also because of all the lockdowns and they've really seriously impacted the, um, the whole supply chain. Then you have this crazy idea uh, of they're against you know red meat and they're also against fossil fuels and it's very curious that the world economic forum had you know oh be careful of a cyber attack and then one of the things that, that they're attacking it's those two areas all right which is doesn't make sense if you're really a criminal you're going to go after something that you could really uh get the biggest bang for your buck out of i mean not you're restricting it to just things that the World Economic Forum once shut down. Um, and people are beginning to realize with the cryptocurrencies because they were able to tra trace that down. Um, right. So is that a good investment or a bad investment right now? No, I think they will eventually confiscate all the cryptocurrency um, and they'll force it into the government uh, version that they're all planning to come out with largely by 2022 to 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Uh, yes, most people use a credit card or a debit card, but all they can trace is that last transaction. All right. And a cryptocurrency, uh, if I got it from a drug dealer and now I take it and I go to your store and I buy something from you, they can trace that and legally they could go all the way to you and say, well, that money's tainted and we're confiscated from everybody in the chain. Um, they can actually tra you know, trace the flow of money from one person to the other. That's what blockchain is about. Uh, and it's being, I think it was created by government and pitched out there, honestly, to get people to trust cryptocurrencies. And right. in the end, they're not going to allow competition. They're just simply not. Um, that's my concern about gold. And it's also my concern about cryptocurrency. Uh, they can just seize it and then say, okay, fine. Um, for every one of these, you get one of those, whatever. Uh, right. They, they decide what the rate would be. Uh, so I, I would just be concerned about that because also, um, you know, Canada is doing the same thing that Europe does. Uh, as of January 1st, you know, you passed a law up there that Trudeau can cancel the currency. And that's to go against hoarders, etc. And when they cancel the physical paper bills, you're given a period of time to take the old ones in and, and redeem them. Now, let's say you had uh, 100,000 stashed away in cash. Oh, where'd you get this from? Did you pay taxes on it? That's part of the whole issue of canceling currency. Okay. Europe's been doing it for a long time. Uh, and the Swiss just did it. Uh, Singapore is canceling its, its thousand dollar note. Uh, so if you look around the world, you'll see they're all moving in that same direction. Um, hmm. And <laughs> I found it interesting. US has never canceled its currency. Uh, it doesn't have the power to. Uh, and so Canada was like the U.S. until January 1st this year. That's when um, Trudeau passed that, that law. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, so I'm not, you know, I'm not probably paying attention to that. And so that's bad, is it, Martin? It gives him the right to say, okay, fine, all you people that got cash, you got one week to bring it in. Wow. And by the way, where'd you get that from? Um, so hmm. that is why people are, are hoarding U.S. dollars. Um, they figure that the U.S. may be the last to cancel its currency. 
Okay. Um, and, it's, and if the Republicans can get back in in 2022, uh, they probably would stop it. But the Democrats have already put in a bill to create a digital dollar. Mm -hmm. um, so you're also on this whole great reset agenda. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I thank you so much for your time. And I, I don't want to keep you like all day because I could probably keep you here. We got questions coming in. Somebody's asking about how we protect ourselves against currency debasement inflation. Do you think we've covered that? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, Marjorie, you're looking at um, collectibles, real estate, uh, stock market. Um, hard, hard and fast things reason. that you can put your, yeah, your money in. Um, uh, okay. It's not gold or silver. I mean, every, you know, some people look at that. Other people would buy art. Um, you know, it all depends. Everything right. seems to be going big for Ferraris. Okay. So uh, one final question from me, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you so much. But, uh, you know, there's uh, a news item saying that there's a freight train of state delegations coming Friday. Nine state delegations will receive and on the scene tour of the historic Arizona Arizona audit on Friday. Looks like, uh, you know, they're gonna complete this audit by uh, the end of the month. And then well, what's your guess? Um, did, do you think that a whole bunch of states are gonna conduct forensic audits and potentially we're gonna discover something, you know, that some yes, of us look, think was I, there? I think the election was clearly rigged, and I think the importance of this isn't whether I, um, I mean, if you prove that, you're not going to get Trump back in. I, I disagree with that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the Supreme Court would have to rule, and I, I doubt that they would. However, uh, if you do find out that this is, uh, you know, affected the local elections for senators or congressmen, then the governor of that state can recall that guy and put somebody else in. So you can change Capitol Hill. I don't agree with the people that think that this will bring Trump back to, to power. I don't think so. Uh, what about uh, 2024? Um, do, do you think that there's every potential that the president may be reelected? Uh, Biden? No. No, oh, sorry. Um, I mean, no, no, no. I, I don't mean, mean that president. I mean, President Trump. I yeah. don't, I'm not sure if he will survive that long. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely we're looking at a, uh, a political uh, watershed in, in, that, in 2024. Uh, I don't think you're going to see... Uh, I don't think the Democratic Party is going to survive as we know it today. Right. Uh, it, it's got two radical, and even the Republicans are likely to split. And so by 2024, we could see a third party emerge. Uh, and mm -hmm. there's, there's some, you know, what we call swamp creatures in the Republican side. And they are the ones that certainly don't want Trump back in. Right. So. Uh, right. We may end up with a completely third party, um, which is a mixture from both sides coming coming together. Huh. Well, fascinating times ahead. And uh, you are one of the most fascinating people on the planet. And it has been an absolute honor to be able to speak with you. Thank you for answering all of our many questions. Is there anything you think we didn't cover that, that you just think we better know? Or have we kind of covered it? No, I think, we, I think we covered it. I mean, this is clearly all orchestrated. I mean, this virus is nowhere near as lethal. It doesn't justify lockdowns, mandatory vaccines and masks and all this sort of thing. Uh, yes. Uh, it just does not. I mean, so it, it, the question to me becomes, this is a political agenda and it's largely to suppress people to gain power. That's it. Yes. And you know what? If you're saying that, I actually absolutely believe it. And uh, I, I hold you in such high esteem, sir. And many, many people do. They were so excited that you were coming on the show today. And I appreciate uh, the time that you've given us. Thank you for what you do. Please continue to do that. ArmstrongEconomics.com. Uh, you can hear uh, Martin Armstrong's 
you know, his very excellent, uh, I guess, predictions of the future. And I thank you so much for uh, giving us your time. I know you don't do it often. It means a lot. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Okay. Thank you. I hope to see thank you again you. soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, that was just wonderful. That was wonderful. Um, you know, that guy tells the truth, right? He really does. He speaks the truth. And the way he, he calls it, the way he sees it. And maybe, um, you know, people can always make mistakes. Uh, I was talking to somebody about why politicians who've, you know, said something can't just retract and kind of just say, a, you know, an apology about something they've made a mistake on. Um, but that seems to be a very hard thing in this day and age. And like Mr. Armstrong said, literally with COVID and the fallout, like it, it's so obvious to most people that this is absolutely the biggest scam of all, of all time. And what they have done, what they have used to maybe implement the Great Reset, and they can't apologize. It's just too big. And do they want to? You know, because we sure up, are up against uh, some pretty evil guys. Thanks for spending this time with me. Um, I love it. My website is lauralynn.tv, and there you can go. If you ever don't see me on any of these platforms that you're watching on right now, you just need to remember this, lauralynn.tv. Do we have the graphic, Mr. Producer Man? Is it handy? Is it right there? Oh, it's on. Sorry. Hmm. I was looking at the other screen. Um, lauralynn.tv. And you can, you can see all the shows that I'm doing. The reason that we do this is uh, because we think that we've come to an unprecedented time of evil. And our calling is to fight it and to speak, to stand with courage, to not relent, to not back down to not be lacking in courage, to not be a coward, and to have integrity and speak with character at this time so that many can be saved. And I hope that you will share that uh, blurb from Tucker Carlson on the vaccinations. And I also hope that you will tell everybody about this, you know, get them to, to uh, listen to Martin Armstrong an awful lot and certainly watch this. Share, 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 everyone. Um, doesn't get better than this, the kind of advice that we just got about our upcoming nation. I appreciate it so much. I wanted to, um, to ask you to please also join me this Sunday at the, um, at the Jack Pool Plaza in downtown Vancouver, where we are going to be having the Freedom Worship Rally. Eli will be there and a uh, Pastor Lalu Mathupalak, Mathupalakal, I, uh, I don't know if I'm saying your, right, your name right there, Pastor Lalu. Please forgive me. But what a guy. This guy can preach. And I'm asking for a powerful day that there will be something that happens there that impacts the nation at the end of it. Uh, we, we certainly can't predict what our world government is going to do. We don't know what uh, Prime Minister Trudeau will do from one day to the next. I mean, I have just found out some things on this broadcast here just now that are very alarming and concerning. And it seems to just skate under, right? Maybe I better be paying more attention to that. Um, but whatever we do, we do know that there is one hope. And the only hope is the Lord. It is the Lord God. He is the only hope. He talked a lot about money. And I want to read for you what uh, Jesus said very specifically in Matthew 6, 19. Uh, if we want to know how and where to put our natural... Um, our natural wealth and on what level we are to organize that. Listen to this. He says, uh, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For me, this is a very big thing. Where do I put my, my efforts, my energy? Where will that be spent? I feel like the Lord is asking me that right now. What's important? And apparently, if you're just going to you know, save up treasures here on earth, that's not really what it's all about. And so the balancing, of course, you know, 
The word also says that it is the Lord God who gives you the ability to make wealth. I don't think anybody is saying that in order to serve God or, um, you know, be a Christian that you can't have great and tremendous wealth. But when those things begin to supersede the calling that God has put on your life, or they begin to be more important actually than your relationship with God. When it overshadows your, your, your consumed thoughts are about money and how to get more money. And it's about greed and all those kinds of things. I think that's what gets us into trouble because where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. I pray always that my treasure, my hope, my God would be at the very center, that he would sit on the throne of my heart so that I can hear his voice so that I would have the kind of relationship with him that I would ask him things before I make big decisions and some of us have some big decisions to make you know um, when when I've got people you know leaders right speaking to them from across Canada that are saying you know it's kind of a dark time right now I know that that's one kind of you know piece of advice that I'm getting and then you have someone like Martin Armstrong I mean he's a numbers guy right he puts together all those graphs and he ain't exactly predicting a you know a sunshine future although he did say something about you know a sunny end or something I just don't remember what that was do you it wasn't all bad. it's not all bad he says it's not all bad <laughs> but remember something your hope and our hope is in the name of the Lord not in our stuff not in our stuff Hey, I've loved being here with you. Thank you for being here with me. I'll see you Monday.
But can we pause before we take communion and repent and understand what the blood really did for us? The spirit of death is moving through a town and the Lord says, this is how you handle death. This is how you handle destruction. I want you to put the blood of Jesus on the doorpost. Put the blood of Jesus on your mind. I grew up old school. So all the hymns, I love them. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. You know, it's not easy to deliver the truth of what our sick world is doing, but for some of us, we feel that we have no choice. Because if we are silent about these abominable things, then we are letting evil go unchecked, and we cannot do that. For those of you wonderful people who are writing me and are sharing your encouragement, I am deeply grateful. Thank you for all the letters that you've been sending. Thank you for the donations and the support. I found out that in order to to speak the truth, you have to become very, very strong. If you would go to my website at www.lauralyn.tv, you'll find all of the ways that you can contact me. Remember, my friends, all is well. All is well. Thanks for joining me.